Hi there, my friends. It's Bill McDonald, the writing doctor. I wanted to uh, finish up the star writing guide for expository and persuasive. Since many of you in ninth and 10th grade as teachers and students are taking your test next week for the first time, I just want to explain to you that whenever you're writing expository or pers persuasive essays, and even if you're answering open-ended questions for extended or essay responses, you do not need to restate the exact words of the prompt. You don't have to restate the exact words of the question. You don't have to have two reasons or three reasons or two examples. So what I'm gonna do is for the next four essays, I'm gonna show you a personal example of the importance of honesty for expository. Or if you were to switch it up and say, write about whether or not it's important to be honest, then because of the word whether um, is indicative uh, of a persuasive essay, or you can say, write about which is more important, honesty or kindness, because sometimes they're mutually exclusive that you can't have honesty and be kind at the same time and you can't always be kind if you're trying to be honest with somebody so you can kind of switch any expository prompts to persuasive by simply adding the words whether and which and making it an opinion where the student has to pick either or or a whether or not statement. So you would have them write whether or not, write whether or not it's important to be honest. You could write, write about the importance of honesty, write about whether honesty always has good results, uh, write about what is the best way to be honest. Those are all the different ways that they've shown high school students how to do it. So the first video, that we're gonna go over is how to, and it's on your page 13 of your star writing guide, how to have an idea uh, based on a personal experience. Now, the personal experience, personal means a person, A-L, actually lived it, is living it, or A-L could be actually lying as long as it's realistic. Now, the person doesn't have to necessarily be you. If you say personal narrative, that yes, it's usually about yourself, but it doesn't have to be that way. So this personal anecdote about honesty and the reason I think um, you should be honest is based on an experience of a family member. So, let me go over it with you and I'll discuss it along the way so that you can kind of get a feel of what an essay that's really focused might look like. Now, I've indented my introduction, my one idea in the body and my conclusion. I want you to notice I spent more than three to five lines and that's okay to do that as long as you have something to say um, because of the way I was writing, uh, some of my words don't go to the end. I always suggest try to use as much space as you can without putting hyphens along the end. What I was trying to do is force everything into the page and uh, without redoing the whole thing, my last line was not going to fit unless I kind of using my program slid everything over to the left. So let's, let's hear about the importance of honesty using a personal example. Marriage is perhaps the one of the most Wonderful opinion, yet challenging opinion commitments two people can make with each other. So a commitment is a promise. So you hopefully, when you make a promise, you're going to be honest enough to keep that promise. Let's see if that's where this goes. For richer or poorer in sickness and in health and until death do us part. Wow. It is with this in mind that I feel being honest is so vital that once you make a commitment to do something, you follow it through to the end, no matter how bad things get later. So I, my, my thesis statement is right there. It's 
vital, not important. I changed a word. When you make commitments to do something, when you make a promise to do something, that you follow it through. And so that's an example of honesty. So let me transition into my example by telling you why I think it's a problem and why I think using a personal example that it's best to at least make the effort to uh, be honest and stick to what you're gonna do. Research says that over 50% of the marriages in the United States end up in divorce. That's an astounding opinion number. And I've heard this is getting higher all the time. Many couples are not even bothering to get married to avoid having to walk down the aisle and make a promise you might not keep. So and since we're not saying you, I'd probably say they might not keep. Thank God my mom was not one of these stats. When she married my dad, she had no idea that this man who had, who made the same promise that she did would decide and cheat on her, not one, but two, but perhaps dozens of times with other women. So I'm already explaining with a specific example about one of my family members, how she decided to be honest and what she said at the altar was what she lived in her life. The first time she told me about it, I was working for my parents at their business. Five seconds after she wrote this horrible, devastating news, opinion, opinion, emotional extension. My father walked right past me on his way to the restroom. I wanted to reach out and choke him, to punch him in the face, anything that could let him know that he couldn't do this to my mom because he wasn't honest. He wasn't breaking the truth. He wasn't, he wasn't making his commitment. My rage later subsided and I watched my brave mother stay faithful and loyal to this man for the next several years as a way of keeping a promise that she made several years ago, even though he didn't. If this amazing woman can keep a promise after all she's been through, it has been an example to me that when you truly decide to do something in life, you do it even when the whole world is doing something else. She said something and she meant it. Now I wanna let you know that in real life, my mom go up, went ahead and decided to divorce my dad because there's so only so much a person can take before you just the straw breaks the camel's back or whatever figurative expression you want to say you can only take something for so long but if i was to put that in it would kind of deter from the point that i'm trying to make that you you're honest so the reader does not have to know that she wasn't honest to the bitter end but in their mind she kept committed to her promise that she made and she was honest she said something and she meant it and again the reader doesn't always have to know the parts that would take away from what your thesis is trying to say so Yes, you can use a personal example. It can be in first person uh, past tense like you saw, because what I was doing, I was using that example of explaining about commitments that you make. And one of the biggest commitments that you can make is on your wedding day at the altar. And so I was able to use not my own marriage, but my mom's as a way of stressing the importance of keeping promises one way of being honest so go ahead and share that with your students or with some of your colleagues just keep in mind that you don't have to have two examples or three if you decide to have one just explain it and, and explain it very well it didn't turn into story it was everything in there was just supporting the whole philosophy that maybe she felt behind well yes he's doing this but we don't make commitments and promises solely based on what other people are going to do or say so we can decide to to stick to our commitments regardless of what other people around us do so that's just a thought um, my next one will be a hypothetical example so just uh, scroll up or down a little bit and you'll find that video.